crews have sealed a four-inch natural gas leak in southwest Portland, Oregon that forced the evacuation of about 15 homes. Even stranger still. Reserve power generation has been brought online, after a fault at the Huntley Power Station caused widespread and major outages in the North Island of New Zealand, including Auckland and Wellington. Back in Oregon, an unexplained explosion erupts in Kenby neighborhood, keeping neighbors isolated indoors. Officials have not released information as to what caused the explosion, but this article and a press release from the Kenby Fire District took no time correlating the event to the bank bombing in Woodburn, exactly three years ago, which killed an Oregon State Police trooper. Authorities said no one was injured when a house was flattened in a gas explosion in the Burnside neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. A still-in-box alarm was canceled and a hazardous materials incident secured following the explosion. In Texas, an explosion ripped through a refinery in Pasadena. The cause of this explosion is also unknown. A weekend diesel fuel spill at UC Berkeley closed a large research and classroom building and spread to Strawberry Creek. Emergency crews Sunday cleaned up hundreds of gallons of the spill, but some had already seeped into the creek and was bound for San Francisco Bay. Workers laid down materials to absorb the fuel and used special trucks and equipment to vacuum it. Roads are reopened following a raw sewage spill at Frederick's Wastewater Treatment Plant. County officials said Monday, December 12. Citizens should avoid water contact downstream from the spill, located at Carroll Creek and the Monocacy River on Gas House Pike, county officials said. Please research, and let's discuss what it is that is in our vaccines. Monday, December 12, 2011, high schools in Bibb County will offer flu vaccines for students. The North Central Health District, which covers 13 mid-state counties including Bibb and Houston, has received state and national recognition for the number of students vaccinated in school-based programs. According to a Q Weather, residents living in Arizona's upper elevations could wake up to 30 inches of snow on Wednesday morning. The Washington National Guard's 262nd Network Warfare Squadron has been assigned to provide cyber defense, and also unspecified forms of cyber offense. Up to 2,000 rural post offices in the UK will close from next summer and be replaced by limited counter services in garages and shops. A burn ban has been declared in Pierce and Snohomish counties effective at 5 p.m. Sunday, due to stagnant weather conditions and rising air pollution levels. The stage one ban by the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency prohibits the use of fireplaces and uncertified wood stoves until air quality improves in those two counties. Like most people in Russia, lawyer Tatiana Merzina knows better than to trust what she sees on television. Whenever I watch state-run television news, it seems to me that Vladimir Putin is really great and his policies are a success, she said. But when I check out internet websites and social networks and see what's really going on, it's an eye-opener, to say the least. South Korean Marines are holding live fire drills in Yellow Sea starting Monday, December 12. Officials said the Joint Chiefs of Staff notified the Korea Hydrographic and Oceanographic Administration of the exercise schedule last Monday and the Korea Hydrographic and Oceanographic Administration posted a warning on its website against vessels passing through these waters. Military officials said the Marines fired thousands of rounds southward, and there wasn't any particular reaction from North Korea. Japan successfully put a radar-equipped spy satellite into orbit on Monday, December 12, 2011. An H-2A rocket carrying a radar satellite lifts off from the Tanegashima Space Center in Tanegashima, Kagoshima Prefecture, southwestern Japan, Monday morning. A Chinese man arrested after a riot in Guangdong province in September has died in police custody. In an online announcement, the municipal government of Shenwei said that the suspect, Zhu Jinbo, suddenly felt unwell on Sunday.
Actor Christian Bale has defended his role in a Chinese-language film portraying the 1937 massacre of Chinese by Japan's Imperial Army in Nanjing. Critics say the film is nationalistic and anti-Japanese, but Bale says the film is not Chinese propaganda. The high, record-breaking winds that hammered Scotland and the north of England last week, are about to be repeated. Londoners and those in the southeast have been warned to batten down the hatches tonight as the first of two major storms whips through the region. Winds of 70 miles per hour and heavy rain are set to hit the capital tonight. Forecasters have issued a severe weather warning for London in the southeast which continues for 30 hours. How fitting! With a mere 36 more hours to go until the end of the UN climate talks in Durban, South Africa, Natural Resources Minister Joe Oliver announced the approval of the Jocelyn North oil sands mine in the Alberta tar sands. So while delegates from Global South countries plea for countries to rapidly reduce emissions, the government approves a new pollution project in the tar sands? Not that this isn't surprising, given the fact that no mine, or tar sands project, has been refused by the federal government. Scientists have identified more than 200 new species in the greater Mekong region of Southeast Asia, a report by conservation group WWF says. They say that throughout 2010 more than 100 plants, 28 reptiles, 25 fish and 7 amphibians were discovered. Conservation authorities have successfully captured a large black bear that had been standing on top of a garbage truck in downtown Vancouver. The animal, estimated to be about 18 months old, will be released into the wild about 100 kilometers north of Vancouver Tuesday. The sky is full of assorted thrills this week, and each one can be spied with the naked eye. Tuesday, the Hubble Space Telescope will make a bright pass and follow an arc high in the south and fade considerably at a spot just in front of Jupiter. Wednesday night, the International Space Station will appear well below Venus setting in the southwest, and then trek nearly overhead across the sky. It will fade just to the right of the bright star, Capella, in the constellation Orija. This pass will be extremely bright and very easy to pick out of the evening sky. The stars Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, in the constellation Orion, will be exceptionally bright as well. A shoulder-mounted laser that emits a blinding wall of light capable of repelling rioters is to be trialed by police. The technology, developed by a former Royal Marine Commando, temporarily impairs the vision of anyone who looks towards the source. The laser, resembling a rifle and known as an SMU-100, can dazzle and incapacitate targets up to 500 meters away with a wall of light up to 3 meters squared. Looking at the intense beam causes a short lived effect similar to staring at the sun, forcing the target to turn away. A fire broke out at a city fire station in Compton and strangely only destroyed $1.1 million in radio and communications equipment that the city bought last year. The blaze broke out at the racquetball court at the city's fire station headquarters, where the radio equipment was stored. The fire was contained to the racquetball court, but the equipment was destroyed. The U.S. security firm formerly known as Blackwater, which was barred from Iraq over a deadly 2007 shooting, renamed itself a second time Monday. USTC Holdings, the investor consortium that acquired ex-Blackwater firm XE Services in December 2010, announced Academy as the new name and brand for XE Services. The BBC hails Tunisia's assembly and their election of a new president in their article. Tunisian activist, Monsef Marzouki, named president. What the BBC predictably fails to mention is that Marzouki's organization, the Tunisian League for Human Rights, was a U.S. national endowment for democracy, and George Soros Open Society-funded International Federation for Human Rights, member organization. There are still no answers as to what caused an apparent explosion in Perry County, Kentucky Sunday night.
Crews spent hours searching Sunday night after initial reports of a possible plane crash with reports of shaking, and others say they saw a fireball, but as of now no one can say for sure what happened in Perry County Sunday night. Blowing sand covers New Zealand streets and turns them into beaches. High winds blasted sand dunes December 12, sending clouds of grit to cover homes and gardens up to 200 meter inland. The federal government says a one-of-a-kind plant that will convert radioactive waste into a stable and storable substance that resembles glass will cost hundreds of millions of dollars more and may take longer to build, adding to a string of delays and skyrocketing price tag for the project. In addition, several workers at Southeast Washington's Hanford Nuclear Reservation have raised concerns about the safety of the plant's design and complained they've been retaliated against for voicing their issues. Four minor earthquakes were detected in central Maine in recent days. Justin Starr, a research assistant at Boston College's Weston Observatory, says a magnitude 1.0 quake was located just south of Millinocket at 4.42 p.m. Sunday, followed by a 1.4 quake about seven hours later. Two even smaller quakes were detected at 6.15 p.m. Sunday and 12.25 a.m. today, but those were too small to register an exact strength or location. From a cue weather. Heavy rain, heavy snow and even water spouts in California today December 12. Multiple water spouts were sighted offshore of La Yola, California around midday. The unusually quiet weather pattern across the country as of late is changing in a hurry this week. A storm diving into the southwestern United States will bring widespread rain and heavy mountain snow into Tuesday. The snow in the mountains of Arizona and part of Southern California will be measured in feet with the storm during the first part of this week.